Hey everyone, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got an OBS tutorial and I'm re-uploading this one because the last one I uploaded I missed a little bit of critical information so I'm going to go over everything and explain it again in a little bit more detail for you. This tutorial is going to be how to get the best OBS stream settings for good computers for affiliates and non-affiliates. If you don't know the difference between that, an affiliate means you are recognized by Twitch and you're one step closer to becoming a professional streamer, and you get a bit of residual income if somebody buys the game that you're streaming off of your site. It comes with a little bit of benefits, and one main benefit that it comes with is transcoding for your viewers. If you're not an affiliate, your viewers are relying on their internet to transcode your whole stream while they're watching you, and most internets aren't good enough to do that efficiently and they'll see pixelation and some sort of stuttering maybe even buffering and stuff like that but let's go ahead and show you the best settings possible the first off if you have a really good pc you're going to usually want to record in 1080p anything beyond that even if you're an affiliate it's going to be really hard for your viewers to watch your stuff because of how much data they're going to be having to download while they watch your stream so let's just say 1080p is a really good spot so we go down to settings go to video, make sure your base canvas resolution is in 1080p, and make sure your output scaled resolution is in 1080p. Now we're not going to be scaling anything, so this one doesn't necessarily matter, but just in case, if you want, you can put it to sharpened scaling here. Now your common FPS value. If you are not an affiliate, you don't want to go above 30. If you are an affiliate, you can go 59.94 or 60. So we're going to go ahead and assume that you are not an affiliate yet, so we're going to do 30. Hit apply, go to output, go to output mode and make sure it's advanced and then go to streaming. And then we go down here to the encoder. Now here's two things here. X264 encoding means your processor is going to be encoding your stream and uploading it to Twitch for you. And the other one, which it's not always going to be in VENCH264, it could be an Intel version of it, but this is, means your graphics card is going to be encoding and uploading it. So if you have a really, really good processor, like a 9th gen i9 or something like that, or an AMD Ryzen, something really, really good, then you want to go ahead and use the X264 because you're not going to be gaming off your processor. You most likely also have a really good graphics card, like a GTX 27 something. So let your processor do the encoding if it's really good and let your graphics card do the gaming. So I'm going to go with 264 right here. Now we come down to rescale output. Now what that means is it's going to take your stream and then size it down to 720p or whatever dimensions you choose. Now the lower you scale it, the less data you're going to have to upload for your stream, meaning the more fluid your stream is going to be for your streamers. So if you're not an affiliate, it's really recommended to drop this down to 720p. It's not going to change your game size and it's not going to affect your game at all. It's just going to shrink it down for you. And so it's going to make it a smaller file size to upload to Twitch and it's going to be a lot better for your viewers. Once you become affiliated, then you could uncheck this and then you're good to go and you can game and stream in 1080p. But until you become an affiliate, you definitely want to rescale the output to 720p. Rate control, there's four different ones here. CBR is constant bitrate. That's usually the best bet. And for non-affiliates, you definitely don't want to go above 3,500. That's usually a max. Because the more bitrate you're pumping out, remember your viewers don't have transcoding, so they're going to have to transcode all of that stuff with their internet. And the more bitrate that you throw at them to transcode, the more stuttering and pixelation they're going to experience. So, for non-affiliates, don't go above 3500. I stream in about 3K, because I'm not an affiliate, but I stream in about 3K and it looks fantastic. When it's rescaled output 720p at 3K, it looks great. But if you are an affiliate, then you could double that if you wanted. That's usually a good bet. 7000-ish with your 60 frames a second is going to provide a really fluid stream, and your viewers are going to be able to watch that much easier. So, if you are affiliated, 7000-ish is really good CBR rate non-affiliated 3000 but if you didn't want to use cbr you can use abr that's average bit rate it's pretty much the same thing as cbr but it allows a little bit of leeway for your bit rate to fluctuate just in case you have a lot going on on your screen so your viewers might experience a hair of pixelation but that's going to make up for any kind of stuttering or buffering so abr 3000 is really good too 
not affiliates specifically, but if you are affiliated, you can do 7,000 or even 8,000 with ABR because you're giving yourself a little bit of leeway. VBR is variable bit rate, which is also very similar to the first two. You tell it a bit rate you want to upload at, but you also have a CRF number, which allows your computer to try a little bit harder to maintain the same quality of the past frames. CRF stands for constant rate factor, and so it's basically a quality scale. 0 to 51. The lower the number, the better the quality. The higher the number, the worse the quality. But also the lower number, the bigger the file size, and the higher the number, the smaller the file size. So if you're streaming, usually you don't even want to use CRF because it's really good quality, but it's a humongous file size you're trying to upload and stream. So if you want to try VBR and you're non-affiliated, you want to do you probably want to do CRF number 25 in a bit rate of about 3000, maybe even 2500, just to give your viewers a fighting chance to watch your stream. If you are affiliated and you want to try VBR, then you could do about maybe five or 6,000 and a CRF number at about 20. Play with that because that's going to be different for every computer because everybody's processor and graphics card is probably different. So play with those numbers. Those are a good starting point. And the last but not least is CRF, which is control rate factor. This one you probably don't want to stream in at all, but you can give it a try if you wanted. This mode's just going to push your processor the hardest to match the quality of each previous frame. So if you want to stream in CRF and you're not affiliated, try 25, maybe even 30 and see what that looks like. If you are affiliated, try 15 to 20 and see what that looks like. But again, I really don't recommend streaming in CRF. CRF is really good for recording your screen, but not necessarily streaming your screen. So personally, I like CBR. ABR also works really well. 3000 for non-affiliates, that's good. CPU usage. So this basically means how hard it's gonna use your encoder, whichever one you chose, either your processor or your graphics card, to encode your stream and upload it to Twitch. So up here, the higher this is, the less CPU usage you're going to be using. The lower this is, the more CPU usage you're going to be using. So if you have a really good processor, like a Ryzen 1800X or something like that, then you could probably do about medium and get away with it really, really well. The one thing you just have to look for down here is your CPU usage. So try this setting out and see how much CPU processing power it uses. And then if it's hitting like 80 or 90, you definitely want to drop this up to faster, faster. But if it's not using too much stuff, you can even drop it down to slower, slower. If you have a really good processor again, profile, usually the only two you want to worry about are high or main high is usually the most compatible profile for people watching your stream on computers or TVs. And main is the most compatible for phones. But if you choose main profile, it is going to sacrifice a little bit of the quality so it could stream better on mobile phones. So your best bet is for high at this point, because if you're not well known enough yet, most people are just going to be watching you randomly on Twitch through the computer. Tune, don't worry about any of these. They're all proprietary. Just choose none on that one. And then X264 options. Don't do anything on there. You're good to go. So there you have it. Those are the best streaming settings you can possibly get for affiliates and non-affiliates using OBS. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that tutorial video. If you liked it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you want, you can also consider supporting my Patreon, because the more patrons I have, the better giveaways and more frequent I could throw them. I also sell a bunch of stuff on Amazon and TeePublic. And if you want to be in on the loop and eligible to earn extra entry points, be sure to check out the community section on my YouTube page. That's where I'll be posting all my updates, along with all the social media in the description. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.